In 2929 of the Third Age, Erethorn II, heir to Isildur, wished to marry Gilrain, a woman of the Dúnedain. Gilrain's father, Dirael, initially opposed the marriage. Gilrain was young, and he believed Erethorn would be short-lived. Dirael's wife, Ivorwen, convinced him to allow the marriage, saying this was all the more reason they should be married soon. The days are darkening before the storm, and great things are to come. If these two wed now, Hope may be born for our people. Everwen foresaw that one day their grandson would wear a green stone upon his breast. That stone was the Elf Stone, brought from Valinor by the wizard Gandalf, and that man would be Aragorn, the future king of Gondor. Welcome to Nerd of the Rings. Today, we're taking a look at the early life of Aragorn before the events of the Lord of the Rings. The Childhood of Aragorn. Erethorn and Gilrain were married in 2929 of the Third Age, and two years later, on March 1st, 2931, Aragorn was born. Tragically, Aragorn would never know his father. One day, when Aragorn was just two years old, Erethorn was hunting orcs with Elrond's sons Eladan and Elrohir, when he was slain, being shot through the eye with an orc arrow. Erethorn died at just 60 years old, which, considering we know Aragorn would go on to live for 210 years, is quite short for one of the Dúnedain. After Arathorn's death, Gilrain took her son to Rivendell, to be fostered by Elrond, as was tradition for the heirs of Isildur. Elrond would raise Aragorn as if he was his own son. He orders that Aragorn's identity be kept secret, naming him Estelle, the Sindarin word for hope. During this time that he called Rivendell his home, Estelle accompanies Eladan and Elrohir on their journeys. In 2952, when he's around 20 years old, he returns from a journey of great deeds with the twins. Elrond was pleased because he saw that he was fair and noble and was coming to manhood early, though he would become greater still in body and mind. Elrond calls Estelle by his true name of Aragorn, son of Arathorn, and presents him with the shards of Narsil and the Ring of Barahir, the heirlooms of the line of Isildur. The Ring of Barahir. So Gandalf Greyhame thinks he has found Isildur's heir, the lost king of Gondor. He withholds only the scepter of Anuminas, the scepter of the king of Numenor, for he had yet to earn it. Meeting Arwen Undomiel. The very next day, Aragorn is walking alone in the woods at sunset. His heart was full of hope, and he began to sing the Lay of Luthien, the song we hear Aragorn sing in Fellowship of the Ring. <laughs> By chance, Arwen had just returned from a visit to her grandmother, Galadriel, in Lorien. To Aragorn, Arwen seemed to be Luthien, widely known as the most beautiful person to have ever lived. Fearing that she would leave and never be seen again, he called to her, Tenuviel, Tenuviel, just as Baron had done when he first met Luthien. As Arwen corrected him and introduced herself, Aragorn did likewise, now feeling that even his newfound high lineage was nothing compared to her dignity and loveliness. Gilrain sensed something different about her son. She eventually learns of his love for Arwen, which she opposes. She believes Arwen's lineage is more noble than his, and that elves and mortals should not intermarry. Elrond also learns of the love that Aragorn and Arwen share. Elrond calls Aragorn to him and says, A great doom awaits you, either to rise above the height of all your fathers since the days of Elendil, or to fall into darkness with all that is left of your kin. Many years of trial lie before you, you shall neither have wife, nor bind any woman to you in troth, until your time comes, and you are found worthy of it. Aragorn lovingly takes his leave of Elrond, and bids farewell to his mother, the house of Elrond, and to Arwen, and goes into the wild. Into the wild. Aragorn takes up his mantle as 16th chieftain of the Dúnedain. In 2956, he meets Gandalf the Grey, and they become great friends. Gandalf advises Aragorn to keep tabs on the region of the Shire, where he becomes known as Strider. From 2957 to 2980, Aragorn takes great journeys in aiding the men of the West against Sauron and his allies. So as not to reveal his identity, he goes by the name of Thorongil, 
Cinderin for Eagle of the Star, wearing a silver star upon his cloak. He first goes to Rohan, serving King Thangal, the father of Theoden. He said that you rode to war with Thangal, my grandfather, but he must be mistaken. King Theoden has a good memory. He was only a small child at the time. He then travels to Gondor, serving under Stuart Ecthelion II, the father of Denethor. It is said that Thorongil was a great leader by both land and sea, and Ecthelion trusted and loved him most. Thorongil had counseled Ecthelion that the rebels of Umbar posed a great risk to the fiefs of the south if Sauron moved to open war. He was granted permission from the steward and gathered a small fleet and launched a surprise night attack, burning many of the Corsair ships and overthrowing the captain of the Haven, all while losing very few of his own men. Though great honor awaits him by returning to Minas Tirith, he leaves when they are in Pelargir, sending word to the steward that other tasks now call him. He was last seen by the Gondorians heading towards the Mountains of Shadow. All the men of Gondor feel a great loss save for Denethor, who seemed to be placed second in the hearts of the men and even his own father. Hmm, that sounds familiar. Aragorn spends the next years traveling to the far east and south, exploring the hearts of men, good and evil, and learning the plots and devices of the servants of the Dark Lord. It is said that his actions ensured the survival of the West for many years to come. In 2980, Aragorn, now 49 years old, is traveling back to Rivendell. On his way, he came to Lorien. He didn't realize it, but Arwen was also there, visiting with her grandmother. Galadriel tells him to cast aside his wayworn raiment and gives him clothes of silver and white. It is said Aragorn then appeared more than any kind of man, but rather an elf lord from the Isles of the West. Aragorn and Arwen wander for a time together in the glades of Lothlorien until it is time for him to depart. They go to the hill of Karen Emroth, where they look east to the shadow and west to the twilight. Dark is the shadow, Arwen says. And yet my heart rejoices for you, Estelle, shall be among the great whose valor will destroy it. Aragorn replies, Alas, I cannot foresee it, and how it may come to pass is hidden from me. Yet with your hope, I will hope, and the shadow I utterly reject. But neither, lady, is the twilight for me, for I am mortal, and if you will cleave to me, even star, then the twilight you must also renounce. And she stood then, as still as a white tree, looking into the west, and at last she said, I will cleave to you, Dunedain, and turn from the twilight. There, at the hill of Karen Amroth, the very hill where she will one day die, Arwen chooses her ultimate fate. Aragorn gives Arwen the Ring of Barahir as a ring of betrothal. Aragorn returns to Rivendell where Elrond has learned of his daughter's choice. He says to Aragorn that perhaps by his loss, the kingship of men may be restored. However, he proclaims that Arwen will not diminish her life's grace for anything less. She shall not be the bride of any man less than the king of both Gondor and Arnor. Aragorn and Elrond speak no further of this. A few years later, Aragorn's mother leaves Rivendell to return to her people in Eriador, where she would seldom see her son, since he was often away for many years at a time. Arwen, meanwhile, dwells in Rivendell. Over the coming years, she watches over him in thought and makes for him a great and kingly standard, one that would only be displayed by a person claiming the lordship of the Numenorians and the inheritance of Elendil. The Passing of Gilrain. Following his conversation with Elrond, Aragorn returns to the wild, into danger and toil. In the year 3001, with Sauron revealed and regaining his power in Mordor, Aragorn assists Gandalf in searching for news of Gollum. This is the same year of Bilbo's 111th birthday and marks the point where Gandalf has begun to suspect that Bilbo's ring is in fact the One Ring. Six years later, in 3007, Aragorn briefly returns to Eriador, where he visits his mother for the last time. This is our parting, Estelle, my son. Now that it draws near, I cannot face the darkness of our time that gathers upon Middle-earth. I shall leave it soon. Aragorn tries to comfort her, saying, Yet there may be a light beyond the darkness, and if so, I would have you see it and be glad. 
But with Gilrain's last words to her son before her death the following year, she answers, I gave hope to the Dúnedain. I have kept no hope for myself. Notice that the first usage of the word hope is capitalized. This is a direct reference to Aragorn himself. She has given her son to the descendants of Numenor, the last hope for their people to be restored. So when you see these lines in use in Return of the King, you can think of Gilrain, the woman of the Dúnedain, who saw her husband cut down so young and died seeing the darkness that lied before her son. The hunt for Gollum. In 3017, after searching intermittently for years, Aragorn finally overtakes Gollum in the Dead Marshes. With Gollum in tow, he travels north through Emin Muil to prevent being seen by Sauron's spies. He crosses the river Anduin at Sarn Gebir. He does this by tying Gollum to a log and then swimming across the river. They proceed along the edges of Fangorn Forest and through Lothlorien, where the elves send word to Gandalf. Aragorn and Gollum proceed along the Anduin northward, and with the help of the Bayornings, the people of Bayorn, he enters Mirkwood. He finally hands Gollum over to Thranduil to be held captive for Gandalf's questioning. In all, Aragorn travels some 900 miles on foot with Gollum. He then returns west where he meets Gandalf at Sarn Ford in May of 3018. There, Gandalf tells Aragorn of the plan for Frodo Baggins to leave the Shire with the Ring in late September. During the coming months, Aragorn goes on a shorter journey of his own. Upon his return in September, he learns from the elves of Gildor that Gandalf has gone missing and the Nazgul have been seen. He also learns that Frodo has left his home, but there has been no news of him yet leaving Buckland. Aragorn anxiously watches the East Road, waiting for signs of Frodo. Finally, on September 29th, Frodo and his companions enter the Prancing Pony in Bree, meeting a ranger named Strider, who would serve as their guide en route to his childhood home of Rivendell. Thanks for watching this look at Aragorn's life before the Lord of the Rings. Be sure to subscribe and hit the bell so you don't miss the next video from Nerd of the Rings.